everyone, my name is Ayesha and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a first year physics PhD student living in New York City. And today's video is all about my most asked Instagram question, which is how to apply to physics PhD school or in general, any PhD school. I'm sure this will be very helpful to anyone who's applying to PhD schools in the United States. This video is part one of applying to PhD school and I will talk about how to shortlist universities where I will touch on topics such as how to research universities, what should you look for in universities, and how to contact faculty to learn more about the universities. This is usually the same for residents and international students, however, international students have to take more tests and fill out more forms in order to apply. I applied to Physics PhD School as a resident, however, if you're interested in specifically learning more about international student version, then like this video and let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, let's get started. The PhD application cycle starts formally on late September and the due dates are somewhere between December to January. However, some PhD school will also have earlier due dates such as early November, so you need to be mindful of that. So applying to PhD school should start a year before you formally want to submit your application. So if you want to formally submit your application in December 2022, then you need to do your research in January 2022. First thing after deciding to pursue a PhD is to research universities you want to pursue your PhD in. This is what I did. I googled best physics PhD universities in the United States and it brought me to these websites. And these websites rank universities depending on various aspects. Usually the top tier and Ivy League schools such as Caltech, MIT, uh, Stanford will always be the top. However, there are amazing other state schools so you just need to give them a chance. Thus, what university you're interested in will depend on a lot of things such as word of mouth, professors and peers, subject dependent research, your childhood dream and etc. The second thing is the location of the universities and this is the most important point when shortlisting university. Where you live, in my opinion, matters the most. Your environment has a direct relationship between productivity and your general happiness. If you like a city's hustling and bustling life where you don't have to take a car and you can walk around everywhere and have restaurants and bars around you, then maybe you should look for a university that's in the city. However, if you like having a car and you like aspects of a small town college life, then you should apply to universities that suits those needs. When I was stuck between two universities, I chose the one that was in New York City because I already have friends and family over here and I love living in New York City, so I chose something that was in the city rather than something that was upstate New York. Another important aspect of choosing where you want to study is the weather. The United States is a very big country and the weather is crazy over here. If you're comfortable with frigid cold and snow, then any of the northern universities will be a perfect fit for you. However, if you don't want to deal with snow and cold for 9 out of 12 months, then maybe choosing some of the southern states will be more appealing to you. But location matters, and I cannot stress this point enough. If you won't be happy in your personal life, then you won't be able to give your best performance in PhD school. You're going to spend five to six years of your life there. Might as well like it. So the next point is what to look for in a university. These are the factors you should look for when searching for universities. Number one, their program structure. A lot of universities have similar structure. Some of them put an emphasis on classes, then secondly on research, and vice versa. You need to decide the pace that you are comfortable with, whether you want to immediately dive into research or you want to take classes to prepare yourself better. My school wants us to wait to do research until our second year and focus the first year completely on studies. It gives us exposure to go into research rotations to see if we like a professor or not. Number two, the faculty and their research. Faculty and their research matters a lot because ultimately you will join a faculty's team and you'll spend your PhD learning from them. So definitely search up the faculty and their research interests. They have in their team, past students and where they are, recent publications and reviews from online websites. I can tell about myself as an experimentalist that I did not want to choose a university where the faculty was not able to provide funding or did not have the equipment for the research that I was interested in. So in my opinion, definitely search up the faculty and their teams. Number three, the funding for graduate students. Now, usually all physics PhDs are fully funded for the entirety of the program for let's say five years, but it's becoming common in places where universities won't be able to fully fund you. And you need to be aware of that. In my university, we are fully funded for our first year and starting our second year, we get our stipend from a research advisor or by doing TA-ship and, um, and becoming a grader for our classes. 
while our tuition is covered. However, there are some universities that will partially fund your tuition or will expect you to pay your tuition in full, and you need to keep that in mind when searching for universities. Also, you want to make sure how much stipend you're receiving from the university and if there's an option to be able to TA a class or become a grader for a class to support yourself. If you don't want to teach in your PhD, which rarely happens because PhDs are cheap labor for universities, search for universities where there is no requirement to teach and you're still able to support yourself with the stipend. Also, depending on the location, the stipend may vary. And a stipend in New York City will be way more than a stipend in upstate New York. And that's because the cost of living in New York City is way higher than any other city. Number four, their admission rate. Now, this really helps in evaluating how realistic you are and how much money you want to spend in your application. So generally, the top tier schools in their respective programs will always have a high application rate and a very low admission rate. Thus, a lot of people will apply to these schools, but only a select full will be admitted. Now, this may be an unpopular opinion. You're not exactly in the range for all of these things, such as your grades, your GPA, your competitive test scores and research, but you still have a stronghold in at least one of them, and maybe especially research, then I would urge you to apply to those universities because you never know how universities make up their minds. If you have reached out to faculty before and have connected with them, then you may want to let them know that you're applying for this cycle and if they can look into your application. If you never apply, the answer will always be no. However, if you're very realistic and you only want to apply to schools where you have a chance of getting in, then I would suggest to only apply to these schools and to not apply for the top tier schools. But ultimately, you should look at the admission rate and then make your decision. So the next point in shortlisting a university is to contact faculty to see whether this is the right fit for you. To do this, go to the university website and click on the program faculty members. If you have a university email such as a .edu email, I would suggest you to use that email to send out emails to faculty rather than your personal ones. And this is because faculty gets a lot of spam and advertisement emails and they don't want to deal with it. There's a higher chance of them responding to a formal edu email than a personal email. So the next thing is to draft this email and you want to start by introducing yourself first and say that you're interested in applying to that program in that university. Next, you should write a very short and brief summary of all of your experiences and accomplishments, which would be of interest to them. Like, if you've already been doing research in a topic that they are interested in and they are doing research in, then you should mention that. And if you have had publications in that topic, then you should also mention that, or any other research and publications. I would encourage to not really talk about grades and GPA because in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter to them because they would expect you to keep your grades up. After you've given a brief intro by yourself, you should start by showing interest in the professor's research, such as by asking them questions, discussing their recent publications. You can ask them a couple of questions about admissions. However, I would generally recommend to wait until the following email once they've replied to you. Take their insight and advice seriously, and if you're already connected with them, then you should ask for a chance to visit them or do a Zoom session to learn more about the research and see whether it's the right fit for you. This shows that you're very interested and you're enthusiastic to learn more about their research. So that's all for this video, how to apply to PhD schools part one, where I talk all about how to shortlist universities. Is that something that you would need to do sooner rather than later? Keep in mind that applying to PhD school is a very time consuming process. And usually you're still doing that when you're taking your undergrad or your master's classes. So earlier the better. The earlier you do this, the earlier your application is submitted and the earlier you get to know the results. Again, I hope you found this video very helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below this video and I will get back to you as soon as possible or I even make a new video about it. So stay tuned by subscribing and liking this video if you want to see more PhD content. I will see you soon in another video. Bye friends.